Here's a wild thought. The technology that's going to change your life in 2025 is probably being built right now. And labs and offices around the world are all thinking of how to even improve this. But with so much of this happening, how do you know which developments, which technologies actually matter? I mean, there's so much out there. How do you cut through the noise? I've been digging into this question and what I have found honestly surprised me. Because we're not just talking about incremental changes, we're looking at a fundamental shift in how technology integrates into our daily lives. Okay, here's what I mean. According to Gardner, by 2025, 75% of enterprise data will be created and processed outside traditional data centers. Think about it. This isn't data living in some far off server farm. It's processed right here where you are in real time. In today's video, we are going to break down the eight major trends that are about to reshape, well, everything. How we live, how we work, how we think about technology. This one's obvious, right? I mean, it's AI, but here's what's really fascinating. We're moving way beyond chatbots and basic automation. That was so 2023, even 2024. Sam Altman from OpenAI puts it perfectly. AI will not replace humans, but humans using AI will replace humans not using AI. And I really think there's truth to that. Really interesting fact is McKinsey found that 63% of organizations increased their AI investments last year, 63% which is really interesting when you think about how quickly organizations, big enterprise companies are moving with AI. MIT Technology Review discovered companies using AI saw a 40% jump in productivity. That's not just cutting costs, that's creating entirely new possibilities, new workflows. I mean, think about how often you use AI in your day to day. Now in 2025, we are really entering the era of AI agents. This is what I've been reading about, speaking to a lot of different companies about how it is going to really be the focus for this coming year. What are AI agents? Well, first of all, when you think of an AI agent, no, it's not gonna take over your job or take over the world. I mean, if it does, we're all in trouble and we can all just go relax on a beach, but we're far from there. AI agents, what they are able to do is essentially tasks on their own. They can learn from their learnings and then continue to learn. I did a really bad job of explaining that. They can do a task, and once they're completed that task, they continue on to the next one, and then the next one, just like how us humans essentially work. They are going to take the jobs that, not a human job, but they're going to take part of the jobs that are really automated or uh, repetitive, so we can focus on bigger, more creative tasks. But there's something even more interesting happening. AI is moving from massive data centers, which we kind of hinted at earlier on in this video, right to our devices, which is going to change the game for privacy. For example, Qualcomm's latest research shows on-device AI can process data 10 times faster than cloud-based solutions. I mean, think about that. What that means for privacy in particular, speed for what's possible. If you're able to just have AI working locally, models running locally on your device, it's wild and it's great for privacy. Let's start there. Speaking of privacy, another big topic is quantum computing. Now listen, I did a video recently talking about quantum computing and so many people were saying, Tiff, it's so far off. What are you talking about? Only to have, I think, you know, it was within that week, Google announced their amazing findings, incredible findings and breakthroughs with quantum computing. It's coming sooner than we realize. I really believe that. I'm happy to have this discussion in the comments if you disagree with me. This is just my opinion on how soon it's coming, but I do think we're going to see a lot more breakthroughs in 2025. The atmosphere is really feeling similar to how the last few years felt with AI is now with quantum computing. Companies are putting a ton of money millions and billions into figuring out how can we be the next company to make a major breakthrough with quantum computing. And once that race starts, which it has, things move quickly. Now, I know sometimes quantum computing can kind of sound a bit like science fiction, but as I mentioned, it's already happening. It's moving from research labs into real world scenarios. Hear me out. IBM CEO made a bold claim. He said quantum computing will be to the 2020s what internet was to the 1990s. I think end of 2020s, 2025, I don't know. And But here's why this matters. Quantum systems are already solving problems 100 million times faster than classical computers. That's really hard to wrap your head around. I mean, we're talking about breakthroughs that could transform everything from drug discovery, from battery technology for electric cars, the list goes on. Morgan Stanley's research suggests that we could see batteries that are more than 25% efficient. Imagine what that means for electric vehicles, renewable energy, storage, even your smartphone. 
But all this computing power leads to our third trend, which is sustainable technology. We don't talk a lot about that on this channel. We really need to start. And this isn't just about solar panels. Microsoft just announced all of their data centers will be 100% powered by renewable energy by 2025. And here's why this really matters. Data centers currently use about 1% of all global electricity. That's more than some entire countries. I know 1% sounds small, but it's bigger than some entire countries. The numbers are staggering. Accenture found that sustainable tech programs could generate 5.7 trillion in new value. So we're, this isn't just good for the planet, which even if it was, that should be enough, but it's also good for businesses, which means they're really going to take hold on all things sustainable technology, which is a great area to get into. Coming in at number four is spatial computing. Now this is something that you might've heard about recently. In fact, Apple's Tim Cook called it the next frontier of human computer interaction. It's a big statement. But what does this actually mean for you? Why should you care out of all the technologies out there? For one, instead of being limited to flat screens, we're moving into a world where digital information exists all around us. And the numbers are where it's always at. The market's expected to hit 92.5 billion by 2027. And here's why. It's not just about cool technology and the new thing to talk about, it's solving real problems. Companies are using it to cut training time by 75%. I mean, think about using spatial technology or spatial computing when you're training someone who works in a factory or even training a doctor on surgeries. Being able to interact with the technology around you versus a flat screen can really cut down training time, saving costs, making more money. Hence why this technology is so important and kind of under the radar still. But all this amazing technology creates a challenge, privacy and security. We'd be so remiss if we didn't speak about these two. By 2025, we'll be creating 463 exabytes of data every day. That's a lot. That's why Google's CEO emphasized that privacy cannot be a luxury good. It has to be an essential, put at the forefront of everything. Now let's talk about our final trends because this is where things get really interesting in my opinion. I always have to say the best for last, you know what I mean? The next one is edge computing. We've spoken a bit about edge computing in the past because it really is coming up quickly. It's bringing processing power closer to where you are. And Grandview Research predicts this market will hit 61.14 billion by 2028. But why is that? Well, for one, when you're processing data closer to the source, everything gets faster and more reliable which companies love, and so do consumers. In fact, Cisco estimates that 75% of enterprise data will be processed at the edge at the edge by 2025. And with 5G networks supporting up to 1 million connected devices per square kilometer, the possibilities feel kind of endless with that. It's, it's a lot to take in, but edge computing is going to be a huge revolution in tech. Okay, moving on to the next one, we have autonomous systems. And I'm not just talking about self-driving cars. I know you probably rolled your eyes for a second there, but there's so much more to it. For example, Elon Musk believes full self-driving cars will be the most valuable asset we have ever created, which I see, I get the time that we would say with this, but this goes way beyond transportation in this example. McKinsey found that autonomous vehicles could reduce accidents by 90% and industrial automation could add up to 15 trillion to the global economy by, I think it was 2020, no, 2030. We're looking at a future where routine tasks across every single industry become automated. Automation is the end goal of all of these companies, freeing us as humans to focus more on creativity, strategic work, the list goes on. Okay, but let's get back to more security things. Zero trust security visualization. Our seventh trend is exactly this, and it's becoming critical as our digital world expands. Gardner predicts that by 2025, 60% of organizations will use cybersecurity risk as their primary metric for making business decisions. That's wild. So if you're thinking of an industry to get into, cybersecurity is the way to go. Now with the average data breach, it costs over 4.45 million. 4.45 million every data breach. This is according to IBM. It's no wonder that other companies such as Forbes is reporting that 76% of enterprises are increasing their zero trust security budgets. Good budgets, hire more employees, get into cybersecurity. And that brings us to privacy first technology. It's becoming non-negotiable for these companies. They overnight can crash if they don't have the right cybersecurity lined up. Gardner predicts that privacy enhancing computation, computation will protect 50% of personal data in 2025. 
50% of privacy-enhanced computing protection. The global privacy tech market is set to reach 103.8 billion by 2028. And here's what's really interesting if you can even wrap your head around that. 75% of the world's population will soon have their personal data protected by privacy regulations. This isn't just about compliance or um, doing what's right. It's about fundamentally rethinking how we handle personal information. Because with tech moving so quickly, everything is about to change. To sum it all up though, here's what fascinates me most about all of this. None of these trends exist in isolation. If you look at Harvard Business Review, companies that integrate multiple emerging technologies are seeing their revenue growth accelerate by 40%. So we're not just building better individual technologies, we're creating entirely new processes and possibilities through combining these technologies together. These are some technologies that maybe are a bit underrated today, maybe aren't spoken about as much, but will continue to become essential in our daily lives. We always see the next big thing come about, and right now it's still AI, quantum computing's coming up, and these are the other ones that are going to continue to make big waves. All right, I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it very helpful. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech, future tech, everything STEM coding related, you know, all the good stuff. And let me know what other topics you want me to cover. I'll see you soon.